So, okay, I've been asked to talk about Freilich readings and its possible role in consciousness. And this is uh, somehow a daunting task, but uh, I, I will try to do my best. And uh, I shall begin by uh, talking about my work on Freilich condensation, and uh, uh, which is somewhat uh, uh, aside from quantum phenomena, but I will come back on these. Uh, then I will quickly uh, recall the basic problem of mind-brain uh, relationship, and then I will comment about the possible role of Freilich coherence in the theory of consciousness, mainly which has been put forward by Penrose, Roger Penrose, the uh, physics novelist of this year. And then I will give you some uh, uh, comment on open problems and ongoing developments. So, first of all, uh, Freilich uh, was a, a distinguished theoretical physicist. He was the first who understood the basic mechanism of superconductivity before the uh, much successful uh, theory of Berlin, Cooper and Schrieffer. And uh, he was wondering what drives uh, enzymatic reactions uh, uh, which are very efficient uh, and uh, especially was wondering uh, how do the cognate partners of biochemical reactions in living cells meet themselves. They are in an overcrowded uh, uh, environment, 40% of the volume is occupied by bi biomolecules in cells, and uh, there is uh, about 130,000 reactions taking place among proteins in, in, in cells, uh, not to speak about all the transcription uh, machinery, so the interactions of uh, uh, proteins with DNA. And, uh, uh, but all this machinery works perfectly, efficiently, and very rapidly. So. The question is, how do the biochemical partners of uh, reactions meet themselves in such a, a crowded uh, uh, environment, uh, and quickly and efficiently? And if, if we take a look at uh, uh, some diagrams like these, uh, this is a, a metabolic pathway, I don't remember which one, that you can find uh, on the uh, Japanese repository keg, uh, you, you see these awful uh, <laughs> structures. Each node uh, is a molecule, uh, and the links uh, are interactions between these molecules. So it, it is really astonishing the complexity of uh, all these uh, molecular machinery inside cells. And uh, for a long time, the current explanation uh, to understand or to, to um, why and how these uh, molecules uh, meet each other was uh, uh, through diffusion. Uh, water molecules are ubiquitous in cells, uh, and the random shocks uh, drive diffusion of uh, larger molecules. Uh, and the idea is that uh, so this produces what is called Brownian diffusion and. The idea is that, is that sooner or later the partners of biochemical reactions will meet. The problem is that uh, a back on the envelope computation shows that uh, this would take uh, a very, very long time. This is uh, actually a n n not efficient mechanism at all. So, since molecules are charged and uh, biomolecules are charged and non-vanishing dipole moments, uh, the idea is that uh, uh, they could interact through electrostatic uh, uh, forces. The point is that uh, uh, cells are filled with freely moving ions, which make the so-called device screening and uh, bound uh, the, the, the effective uh, interaction length to less than 10 angstroms. And moreover, the water permittivity is uh, very large, and this weakens uh, considerably uh, electrostatic interactions. So, the 
Uh, next question is, uh, what about if static electric fields uh, are not effective, what about uh, oscillating electric fields? And uh, uh, first of all, at high frequencies uh, of oscillating electric fields, the water permittivity drops down to small values. And uh, experiments uh, on uh, electrolytes show that uh, high uh, high frequency electric field uh, uh, can uh, do not suffer device screening. Uh? Think of a uh, uh, salted water of uh, of the sea, in, in, and it is an electrolyte, and uh, light can pass through without being uh, too much, uh, so so strongly attenuated. And so the idea uh, put forward by Freilich was what if uh, biomolecules could behave like uh, as microscopic antennas? And so by vibrating at high frequencies, they could produce uh, oscillating electric fields, actually electromagnetic fields, and this could mediate uh, uh, interactions at long distances because elect electric, uh, uh, vibrating electric fields uh, at sufficiently high frequencies are not screened and are not weakened by uh, the water permitti permittivity. So the idea uh, that Freilich put forward in a nice paper uh, at the end of the 60s of the last century was that uh, micromolecules uh, could undergo a phonon condensation phenomenon. If uh, brought out of equilibrium by an external energy input, provided that the input rate of energy exceeds some threshold value. And uh, 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 the, the, to better explain what this means, uh, at equilibrium, uh, the shock of water molecules, uh, the fact that uh, at room temperature, uh, all, all the <coughs> atoms and, and uh, substructures of a a large molecule vibrate incoherently, uh, wobble. Uh, whereas uh, the idea, uh, the Freilich suggestion was that uh, if we feed energy, for example, through hydrolysis of ATP molecules, uh, if the input rate exceeds a threshold value, uh, all these, uh, uh, the, the whole molecule could start uh, vibrating coherently. Huh? And uh, the uh, expected frequencies uh, for such coherent vibrations uh, is in the range of uh, subterahertz or uh, terahertz. And uh, uh, so again, since biomolecules are generically charged and have non-vanishing dipole moment, uh, what Freilich uh, suggested is that off resonance, in other words, if uh, two molecules vibrate at different frequencies, uh, and the idea is that you excite uh, uh, these collective coherent vibrations. But if you have two molecules that vibrate uh, uh, at different frequencies, uh, so off resonance, uh, uh, the potential uh, interaction falls down, uh, falls off as r to the minus six. So a very short range interaction of the van der Waals type, so to speak. Whereas at resonance, uh, uh, the, 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 poten the interaction potential goes as the inverse third power of the distance. And of course, resonance means uh, selectivity. Huh? So the idea uh, is that uh, this kind of phenomena might be relevant uh, to organize uh, this complex uh, molecular machinery at work uh, in, in living cells. Of course, this is very far from uh, the, 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 oh, the complexity of, uh, of, uh, of the interior of a cell, but uh, this is uh, the idea of a basic uh, uh, mechanism which a, a ba let's say, a new actor that could enter the, the, the game of uh, 
the molecular machinery in, in cells. And uh, so, uh, to summarize, uh, the idea is that Frelich condensation of phonons of the uh, vibrational modes of a macromolecule could entail a giant dipole oscillation at some given frequency. And uh, these, uh, if, if we have uh, two molecules uh, uh, undergoing uh, uh, dipole oscillations, this giant dipole oscillation, uh, there is no screening effect uh, of the device of the uh, yeah, of the device type, and the uh, water permittivity is sufficiently low uh, to, to make possibly these interactions. Uh, uh, efficient and work uh, at uh, large distances. Okay. Uh, okay, I don't uh, I don't want to bother you with uh, technical details, uh, but the idea is that you have a micromolecule with uh, all its set uh, of uh, vibrational modes in contact with a thermal bath, the thermal bath which is represented by, for example, the surrounding surrounding water molecules and the source of energy which brings this macromolecule out of equilibrium and uh, as i told you perhaps uh, this could be atp hydrolysis or uh, for example uh, uh, photons produced by mitochondria for the moment uh, th this is somewhat an open uh, point and uh, Freilich derived some rate equations uh, and it was uh, able to uh, prove that there is uh, actually this uh, phonon condensation, this phenomenon uh, uh, of switching on collective vibration when the uh, input energy rate, uh, this S term, exceeds uh, uh, a threshold value. Uh, these equations can be derived from uh, a, a Hamiltonian model in second quantization. I don't want to, to give you details of, the, uh, of this kind, but this is uh, uh, this quantum formulation uh, of, uh, of, of, of the Frelich rate equations uh, uh, can be, uh, has been our starting point uh, for doing what? I will tell you in, in a moment. The point is that. Uh, uh, Freilich uh, ideas and, and uh, proposition has been uh, discarded for a long time uh, for two reasons mainly because uh, the biosystems are too warm uh, they are warm, uh, wet, noisy and uh, biomolecules are uh, heavy so that the very thermal wavelength is uh, uh, in general, much smaller than the typical dimensions of the molecules. And uh, uh, the original uh, proposal of Freilich was uh, in, within a, a quantum framework, uh, and uh, uh, this has been the reason uh, of, a, of a deadly criticism. And so that it has been discarded for, for a long time. But uh, what we did recently uh, was to rephrase uh, uh, the quantum. Uh, then I will come back. Uh, the, the, the history is not uh, is not ended. Also on the quantum side, but uh, we have uh, produced a classical version of the Frelich uh, uh, model by dequantizing it uh, and. Uh, uh, let's say a, a classical model uh, uh, is free of all this criticism uh, due to the wet, warm uh, uh, environment and uh, of the fact that we have we deal with uh, heavy objects. And uh, from the Hamiltonian, from the model uh, that I quickly uh, showed you, I don't want to, to give you all the, the details of the technical details, uh, but the point is that we can replace the rate equations that uh, Freilich wrote by uh, systems, by a dynamical system, a system of ordinary differential equations, uh, uh, describing the time evolution of the amplitude 
of the different uh, uh, vibrational modes uh, constituting a model, a, a molecule. And uh, again, we have a source term. And uh, what we found uh, is that when the energy input rate uh, is sufficiently large, uh, these different pictures correspond to higher values of the energy input rate. Uh, and these uh, uh, histograms refer to the amplitudes of uh, a, some given number of vibrational modes uh, uh, in, in the model, uh, we observe uh, a depletion of energy in the higher frequency modes. And uh, after a while, uh, for a sufficiently strong uh, input energy uh, rate, uh, all the energy which is uh, fed to the molecule is channeled into the lowest frequency mode. Uh, here, here is, for example, as a function of the energy input rate, uh, the, uh, the um, amplitude and the energy content, if you want, of uh, different modes. This is a fundamental mode, uh, and these are a higher frequency mode, which are depleted uh, when uh, uh, the energy input rate is, uh, uh, um, is higher. Okay, and uh, in other words, uh, uh, the Frelish condensation mechanism uh, holds true in a quantum framework and uh, also in a classical framework. And uh, interestingly, the, the structure of the equations that we found uh, is uh, very similar, very close, mathematically speaking, to the original uh, uh, Frelish equations. And uh, uh, we did uh, two independent experiments uh, in Montpellier in France uh, and in Italy in Rome with two different uh, setups. Uh, and uh, uh, okay, I will tell you more about this. Uh, and we choose uh, a, a model uh, protein, uh, the, the BSA bovine serum albumin in uh, uh, aqueous solution and uh, we uh, covalently bonded uh, we covalent, uh, we attached uh, covalently to this bsa protein uh, between uh, five and six uh, uh, fluorochromes uh, which are dyes uh, and uh, uh, that can be excited uh, um, by a, a laser light uh, in, in blue and 5,100, uh, 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 I don't remember, ah, here, 520 uh, uh, nanometers. Uh, and uh, in so doing, we create hot spots uh, on, the, on the protein. And these uh, initiate what is called uh, a protein quake and uh, these hot points uh, by an inverse cascade of energy uh, to the internal vibrational mode of the protein of the protein uh, can induce uh, uh, theoretically could induce theoretically the condensation phenomenon and actually this is a uh, uh, schematic representation of the Montpellier apparatus. We have a, a watery solution of, uh, of the BSA protein. We have a, a visible blue light uh, uh, produced by an argon laser, a microwire with a, um, a waveguide, uh, and uh, a terahertz uh, um, electromagnetic uh, field, which makes a sweep in frequency in order to, to see how the system responds. In Rome, uh, the apparatus was a little bit different. Uh, the detector was uh, a field effect transistor. This is a micro, uh, electronic microscope uh, photograph of the, of the um, detector. And again, uh, we excite by a laser light uh, the BSA proteins in solution and uh, with a terahertz uh, uh, field uh, making a frequency sweep. And what we found uh, 
the, that uh, both experiments gave uh, a, a perfect agreement uh, with, a, uh, with a, an absorption line at 314 gigahertz. And uh, experimentally, we need to, uh, uh, to, to, to feed enough energy. So uh, this uh, figure tells us how the system responds uh, when the uh, laser power is increased. There is a threshold effect and at high powers of the laser, we have a saturation phenomenon. The same, at least qualitatively, is reproduced by our theoretical uh, model for flash condensation. In other words, saturation and the threshold, which gets sharper and sharper as the number of vibrational modes uh, is uh, considered uh, uh, in numerical uh, solutions of our equations. And uh, by applying a formula which describes uh, a spheroidal uh, uh, vibration of an elastic sphere uh, and by entering uh, experimentally known parameters for this BSA molecule, uh, the Young modulus, uh, elastic modulus, its density and its hydrodynamic radius, we got 300, oh my God, 308 gigahertz. So uh, uh, very, very close, very close to uh, to the experimental uh, frequency. So uh, both this, well, the, this uh, computation and the qualitative agreement between experimental outcomes uh, and uh, our uh, uh, quote-unquote toy model for fresh condensation uh, confirmed the possibility of uh, uh, of exciting this coherent uh, vibration of, uh, of a macromolecule. And this has been the first uh, experimental evidence uh, of, a, of a, uh, such a phenomenon. And uh, this brings about also a, a giant dipole uh, oscillation. And actually, we have found, uh, I'm not going to, to talk about this, we have found that uh, actually this kind uh, of collective vibration of macromolecules of this of this protein and of another protein are able to activate uh, 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 long range interactions and we have detected uh, interactions up to more than 1000 angstroms and uh, another comment that i can make is that uh, uh, as I already uh, said uh, quickly, uh, the dynamical equations that Freilich worked out uh, and that we have found uh, by means of this dequantification, so to speak, uh, of a Freilich original model, uh, the, these dynamical equations have the same mathematical structure. And so the fact that we have been able to prove uh, this phenomenon in a classical context uh, makes us think that perhaps also its quantum counterpart uh, is, uh, is possible. Huh? Uh, again, uh, I have to insist on the fact that we need uh, uh, to bring a molecule out of thermal equilibrium. Huh? And, uh, uh, okay. Now, uh, the, the, the difficult part, uh, how to link this, uh, uh, th th there is a, a major leap for the moment, uh, how to link this uh, to the mind-brain problem, because uh, I've been asked to, to talk about the relationship between this phenomenon and consciousness. Uh, the mind-brain problem uh, uh, is a very old one, and it has been uh, uh, a hard problem for philosophers, the scientists, and nowadays uh, neurosciences are uh, uh, quickly developing and bringing a lot of nice and interesting uh, results. But uh, to, to, to 
how to say, uh, to reduce uh, in, in a few words uh, uh, a rather uh, diffused point of view, uh, since computers uh, nowadays are uh, everywhere and uh, this, uh, these computers provide uh, a good metaphor of this problem, of this relationship between mind and brain. And so the idea is that our brains are uh, biological computers uh, and uh, uh, mind and mental phenomena are uh, something like the software of this uh, quantum computer. Okay, the problem is, uh, is this actually uh, a reasonable uh, metaphor for all the possible mental uh, processes in our brain. And uh, uh, Roger Penrose, uh, in his beautiful book, Shadows of the Mind, uh, has argued that uh, uh, our mental processes uh, uh, can, in, in particular the intuition of mathematicians, uh, can solve uh, uh, undecidable problems. And uh, so, uh, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Gödel's theorem. A formal system, uh, so a mathematical theory, uh, can be consistent. In other words, we cannot prove a statement uh, and its negation. Uh, only if it is incomplete. In other words, only if it contains uh, uh, at least one, which in mathematical jargon means uh, possibly an infinite number of sentences, of statements, of theorems, if, if you want, uh, uh, which cannot be proved. In other words, we cannot uh, say by no means if uh, a given statement is true or, or false. Uh, this is the core of uh, undecidability. And, uh, oh, excuse me. Oh, no. What? No. Okay. And so Roger Penrose noticed that uh, uh, the mathematicians can, the intuition of mathematicians can uh, can solve, can find uh, the solutions of uh, undecidable uh, problems uh, and uh, uh, undecidable problems uh, can be translated into non-computable uh, uh, problems. It was Alan Turing which rephr who rephrased uh, uh, Gödel's theorem, incompleteness theorem, into terms of non-computability. In other words, uh, an abstract uh, uh, computer uh, which uh, solves uh, any given problem, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, looks for the answer to the, the truth value of a sentence by uh, making a, a atomistic uh, fundamental operations, if uh, such an abstract computer, which is called a Turing machine, uh, is, um, tackles uh, an undecidable problem in the Godelian sense, uh, the Turing machine will never stop. Uh, and so an undecidable uh, statement uh, is non-computable. Okay, and so uh, the fact that some uh, mental functions of our brains uh, uh, can solve non-computational, uh, no, no undecidable uh, problems, uh, uh, which are also uh, non-computational, means uh, that our brains uh, actually can behave uh, uh, differently with respect to Turing machines, are not Turing machines. And there is another interesting argument that goes in this direction, which is due to Carl Prevram, uh, who was a neurosurgeon, and uh, he observed uh, uh, that uh, patients with uh, major 
cerebral cortex injuries uh, didn't lose uh, uh, some uh, higher mental uh, functions. And uh, he put forward uh, the metaphor of, uh, of the hologram to explain this uh, functioning of, uh, of, the, of our brains. Uh, if you remove a piece of a photo, the, of a standard photograph, uh, the information contained in the piece that you remove is lost forever. Whereas if you have a, a hologram and you remove a part of a hologram, you still have all the information about the image which is uh, uh, represented by the hologram and once you shine a laser light on it, uh, you just lose uh, uh, some resolving power. Okay, but if you take the central process processor unit uh, uh, of a computer and you remove uh, uh, randomly uh, some pieces, some parts of it, uh, of course it will uh, no longer work. So, okay, this is the uh, first uh, argument. But, of course, uh, uh, if we look at uh, all our modeling uh, of, uh, of the brain uh, uh, functioning of the electrophysiology of uh, uh, neural networks, uh, like uh, modern versions of the Ocean Axley model, uh, we don't see how we can account for non-computational mental functions. And uh, so this is a, a strong argument that, that has been given by Roger Penrose against uh, this metaphor that uh, the mind-brain problem can be uh, reduced uh, to, the, to this metaphor of software and hardware of a biological uh, computer. And so the question arises, what kind of brain structures uh, can support this uh, non-computational functioning? And uh, before uh, uh, telling you what Roger Penrose put forward, uh, I, uh, uh, th there is another nice argument uh, against the fact that our brain uh, is uh, a classical computer or something like that. And so we need to look uh, for something else and notably uh, quantum functionings, quantum processes. Uh, and, but the problem is which kind of quantum processes, where and how. But so uh, the other argument uh, is uh, based uh, on energetic uh, uh, considerations. And, uh, okay, here in this slide, uh, I've summarized that uh, our body needs uh, about 100 watts of metabolic power, and this is uh, uh, mainly given by uh, the uh, oxidative phosphorylation, and uh, which converts uh, glucose into uh, molecules of uh, ATP, which is the energetic currency of uh, uh, living matter. Okay, here is, uh, uh, I've given some numbers, but uh, the, what is uh, interesting to us now is that the brain, our brain is the organ which has the highest energy consum consumption rate, about 25% of the total. So. 25% of 100 watts is 25 watts. And again, the main source of uh, the energy for our brain is uh, again the hydrolysis of ATP molecules. And uh, uh, most of this energy is used for uh, thermal uh, homeostasis, uh, protein synthesis, and so on. Only about 5% remains uh, for. Uh, all the, all the mental processes, uh, uh, which are uh, uh, memory, cognitive processes, consciousness, uh, uh, so the higher mental functions. So about four watts in total. Huh? Uh, 
not that much actually. To give a, an idea of what a classical computer needs, uh, we take uh, a, as uh, an example uh, the IBM Blue Gene supercomputer cluster and it has a computing power of 10 to the 16 flops uh, bytes per second per second and uh, its energy consumption is about uh, 10 millions of watts and uh, if you look at uh, what happens in our human brain we have about 10 to the 11 neurons uh, and about uh, 10 to the 4 synapses for large neurons uh, and uh, with a commutation uh, rate of uh, uh, 1000 per second, we have uh, something like 10 to the 18 operations uh, per second. Let us call these uh, flops. Huh? And uh, this would imply an energy consumption, uh, a power consumption of 1000 megawatts, the power of a nuclear power plant, okay? And, uh, okay, these, uh, these are rough estimates, of course, but another argument telling us that our brain uh, uh, cannot work as a classical computer. We have to resort to different kind uh, uh, of, uh, of phenomena. So, uh, let us coming back to uh, non computational phenomena, uh, mental phenomena. Uh, the, the hypothesis that has, that has been put forward by Roger Penrose is that uh, the only place the, the, where we can find the non computational phenomenon in, in the known physics, uh, the now, the nowadays known physics, uh, is the collapse of the wave function. It has uh, good arguments to, to, to say this. Uh, and, uh, and so we have to look, again, we have to look at quantum physics to account for the emergence of mental phenomena out of our uh, brains. And uh, as I told you already, Carl Prebram and uh, uh, John Eccles, a uh, uh, Nobel laureate uh, uh, for medicine, a uh, neuroscientist, uh, were looking uh, at quantum physics uh, as the only possibility of uh, accounting for the relation between a non-material uh, uh, entity, our mind, uh, our uh, conscious mind, uh, and uh, a material uh, substrate, uh, our brain. Of course, uh, this also pos poses a, a hard problem. How a, a non-material entity can act uh, without violating uh, energy conservation on a material entity, the brain. And uh, uh, so where do we look for uh, quantum phenomena uh, in our brains, uh, which kind of structures can uh, sustain this kind of phenomena. And uh, uh, Penrose uh, uh, in collaborated with Stuart Amerov, uh, an anesthesiologist, uh, who observed uh, many years ago that cytoskeletons uh, could be uh, the computational uh, units uh, of uh, eukaryotic cells uh, and uh, in particular uh, by observing a, a unicellular uh, uh, organism at the paramecium and I, I will show you on the next slide and uh, the cytoskeletons uh, are made of a hollow um, homopolymers, uh, and I will show you uh, a little bit more about th these objects. Uh, and uh, uh, these uh, cytoskeleton, uh, cytoskeletons uh, uh, are present in each eukaryotic cells and also 
in neurons. And so they form an ultra network, so to speak, at a deeper level inside the neural network. And the hypothesis put forward is that this ultra network could be the interface between between uh, mental uh, processes and uh, uh, the functioning of uh, the neural network. So let us see why. Uh, so uh, what Hammerhoff observed, uh, not only him, uh, uh, of course, but uh, uh, paramecia are uh, unicellular uh, organisms uh, with cilia, and uh, uh, they show rudimentary uh, actions uh, of, uh, so to speak, quote unquote, learning and memory, and also even mating. And uh, uh, since these are unicellular, uh, the only structure that can, uh, the, the, the cilia, excuse me, the cilia with, with which they, uh, they move uh, in their environment uh, are uh, uh, the external uh, uh, pro propagations of uh, of uh, of the of micro tools of the cytoskeleton inside, and uh, uh, and so the only possibility is that uh, the cytoskeleton uh, uh, inside uh, inside these uh, organism uh, is a computational. Uh, uh, it is a small computer, so uh, roughly speaking. And, uh, uh, okay, in other words, here is a leap, of course, but uh, the idea is that uh, um, we, we have inside our brain a, a network of neurons, but inside our neurons, we have uh, uh, some thousands of uh, microtubules, uh, and uh, microtubules uh, forming the cytoskeleton of, uh, of uh, each neuron modulate, for example, uh, uh, the intensity of uh, synaptic junctions. Uh, not only, uh, and uh, okay, let me show the microtubules, so are hollow polymers. Uh, made of a dimer alpha and beta tubulin, these are proteins, and, uh, and, uh, okay. And the interesting fact is that each tubulin has 47 sites uh, which are sensitive to volatile anesthetics uh, like xenon. Xenon is a chemically inert gas, but it is a powerful anesthetic. And uh, if given to paramecia, uh, they stop moving. The motility of uh, paramecia is, uh, is uh, blocked. And uh, in humans, it switches off consciousness, mental functions, uh, 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 by, uh, okay, without any chemical uh, uh, interaction, uh, but just uh, just uh, making a physical interactions with the with the subunits of microtubules. Okay, and so uh, uh, the idea, the, the, the proposition is that microtubules, uh, which are uh, which form these neural cytoskeletons. Uh, have to play a central role in uh, uh, for the explanation of uh, the existence uh, the, the, of uh, mental phenomena uh, at a deeper level with respect to the uh, neural uh, network. And where is Freilich uh, coming from? Uh, coming to, to the, the idea. Uh, so the tubulin molecules have two conformational states. Uh, uh, when an electron makes a jump uh, uh, between two internal uh, hydrophobic pockets. And uh, 
uh, what Roger Rini, uh, Van Ross initially uh, put forward was uh, the idea that uh, uh, by uh, giving energy, for example, with the ATP uh, uh, hydrolysis uh, to, uh, to, to the microtubules, uh, which are schematically represented here, uh, Mm, some tubulins uh, could exist uh, in a quantum superposition of these two configurations. Uh, and uh, uh, by uh, growing, by, by making the number of uh, uh, tubulins uh, in, in this coherent state, in this superposition state, grow, at some moment, uh, uh, mm, a, a, a collapse, a wave function collapse, uh, uh, would take place. And the idea is that uh, Freilich enters the game because uh, of the synchronization uh, between all these quantum, all these uh, uh, tubular molecules in quantum superposition. So his idea was that uh, the, the Freilich condensation mechanism. Oh, enter Excuse me. Uh, so, uh, so the Frelish uh, mechanism would enter to uh, to make uh, a coherence uh, of, the, of, of all these uh, uh, molecules of these tubulins in uh, superposition in quantum superposition would enter to, to make them uh, in a coherent state. Uh, the the Frelish mechanism would make all of them uh, in, a, in a highly coherent quantum state. And uh, with a somewhat uh, exotic theory, uh, which is called uh, uh, orchestrated objective reduction of the, uh, of the wave function related to quantum gravity, uh, when the, the mass uh, involved in these uh, coherent uh, uh, state exceeds a critical value, there is uh, a spontaneous uh, wave function collapse. And this phenomenon would be an atom, so to speak, uh, of, uh, of uh, consciousness. In other words, here is uh, the number of uh, molecules uh, in, uh, in coherent state. Uh, and, uh, and so again, the Frelish mechanism would enter here to uh, to phase lock all these uh, uh, tubulins uh, in superposition, quantum superposition state, until the threshold is uh, is reached, and then uh, uh, the, the uh, collapse of this collective uh, wave function would be. A, an atom of consciousness, uh, so to speak. Of course, uh, this is uh, uh, at the level of a single microtubule. But for example, uh, in, uh, 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 of course, in, inside uh, neurons, uh, uh, the, there is a, a large number of microtubules, and all these microtubules are connected by uh, microtubules. Uh, uh, Protein, by, by proteins called MAPS, uh, which make uh, uh, a stiff uh, structure and which are also uh, thought to uh, organize the quantum or possibly organize the quantum coherence of a, a, a whole set of microtubules around. Uh, and, and, and inside, excuse me, inside a, a single neuron. Of course, uh, in order to have a, a, a mental, if, if you want to explain mental processes through quantum coherence, uh, it, it is not enough to have quantum coherence only inside a single microtubule. We need to produce uh, coherence also inside the neuron, and then, since we have this ultra network, uh, uh, and since the microtubules modulate uh, 
the synaptic junctions, we need uh, to have quantum coherence at much larger scales, uh, involving a, a large number of, uh, of, um, of neurons, of course. And again, so uh, a we need uh, a mechanism uh, uh, of quantum coherence uh, of a Frehlich like uh, type. Uh, so, uh, and this model has been criticized uh, because, uh, again, uh, the tubulins are uh, large molecules, heavy molecules, uh, and the idea that they can exist in a superposition, uh, in a quantum superposition of uh, uh, states, uh, these two conformational uh, states that they, that they can uh, take, is, uh, has been criticized and it is hardly tenable. And so, uh, but still we need uh, to, to look for uh, quantum phenomena inside uh, our brains and uh, uh, still microtools and cytoskeletons uh, are the only uh, places where we can look for quantum phenomena. And uh, uh, we have at least uh, three different levels uh, coupled uh, uh, among themselves. Inside microtubules, we have water molecules, and uh, it has been surmised that uh, inside microtubules, uh, uh, some coherent uh, phenomena uh, could be produced, uh, again by metabolic drive, and uh, uh, some uh, phenomena uh, which are called bipulses in quantum optics uh, could be. Uh, sustained a, 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 in the interior of microtubules. Then we have a, a classical part, so to speak, which is uh, uh, mainly constituted by, uh, by the, the, the tubulin molecules. Here, perhaps uh, the long-range interactions that I've been uh, studying uh, could enter the game uh, when modeling uh, the dynamics of these objects, because uh, uh, if uh, beside dipole-dipole uh, interactions and van der Waals interactions, which are uh, short-range interactions, we can think of the possibility of, having, of activating also uh, long-range interactions, of course, uh, our modeling of, uh, of the functioning of microtubules, uh, of the dynamics of, uh, of microtubules could be strongly affected. But then there is a, another level, and uh, uh, which can be, which can host uh, uh, quantum uh, phenomena. Inside uh, uh, the tryptophan um, amino acid, uh, which is uh, which constitutes uh, uh, tubulins. Uh, uh, there are uh, uh, aromatic rings, uh, which are uh, organized in uh, in lattices, uh, which are called uh, pi stacks. And uh, uh, the electrons moving in these aromatic rings uh, are, uh, are quantum. Can only be described by quantum mechanics. And these uh, uh, structures, these uh, filaments, uh, the spy stacks uh, along the microtubules uh, can host, uh, uh, for example, quantum coherent energy transfer or uh, uh, coherent uh, information transfer along, uh, uh, along my microtubules. Uh, and, uh, uh, okay, uh, this is uh, too technical, uh, we can put together uh, these three levels uh, in, in the, the classical and quantum by a formulation of classical dynamics uh, uh, in Hilbert space. Uh, we can reformulate classical dynamics uh, in terms of Hilbert spaces uh, and with a formalism which is very close to 
quantum mechanical formalism so that we can put together uh, uh, the quantum phenomena and classical phenomena in, in the same framework. And for example, uh, uh, those condensation phenomena that we have found uh, in a classical framework could all possibly uh, be associated or could help, could sustain, could drive, we don't know exactly, uh, also uh, interesting quantum uh, phenomena, uh, loosely speaking, quantum computation in microtubules uh, and in the ultra network of microtubules. And uh, uh, to end, uh, this is science fiction I, I wrote, but, uh, as I told you, uh, um, as I told you, um, uh, John Eccles uh, was uh, thinking of quantum mechanics. He was one of the first uh, uh, thinking of uh, quantum mechanics as a possible explanation of this mind-brain relation uh, because of uh, uh, problems with energy conservation. And uh, uh, since uh, uh, is it too long? Should I stop? No. Okay. Do, uh, do, do carry on. A couple more minutes. No problem. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so the, uh, the Eccles noticed that uh, even if uh, all the excitatory afferences of a neuron uh, say to the neuron fire, this happens with a low probability, about 22-25%. And uh, uh, he said, OK, but since uh, quantum mechanics deals with probabilities, uh, if the mind uh, can uh, change the probability of firing of neurons, uh, uh, we can understand uh, how the mind uh, drives the brain uh, without violating uh, energy conservation. Uh, the problem is that uh, in order to uh, affect probabilities uh, in quantum mechanics, uh, you have to, uh, anyway, to have a, a, an energetic interaction. And, and so, uh, so actually this doesn't work, but there is a, a, a nice suggestion put forward by David Bohm uh, to describe the wave function collapse. And uh, he introduced uh, a field of hidden variables which drives the wave function collapse without being energetically coupled to, to the quantum uh, uh, system. And so uh, I, I wrote science fiction with a question mark. So the, the idea is that this field could be a good candidate uh, to describe uh, non-material and non-energetic entity uh, having proto-mental qualities. And uh, okay, I will stop here and uh, 